Hi, I'm Teacher Thomas. Welcome to A-Level Maths. This is 9231 Further Probability and Statistics, Topic 4, Non-Parametric Tests. We're looking at the topic of Single Sample Sign Test Normal Approximation. We can use a normal approximation when we have an n that is greater than 10. And this works if you think about the use of a normal approximation in a binomial, then we require n times p to be greater than 5 and n times q to be greater than 5. For the sign test, the probability is 0 0.5, so we can summarize all of that. If n is greater than 10, then we can use the normal approximation. We will say that our test statistic follows a normal distribution with a mean of sample size divided by 2 and a variance of sample size divided by 4. Regarding the test statistic, we're going to count the number of items greater than the median, the number of items less than the median, and we want the minimum of positive or negative. As an example, if we have a sample size of 15, and when we analyze in comparison to the median that we're testing, we end up with the positive 5. 5 measurements are greater than the median. The negative 10. 10 measurements are less than the median. Then t equals the smaller of these two numbers, which is 5. When we use the normal approximation, we're going from discrete, which is what binomial is used for, to continuous, which is what normal is used for. So we also need a continuity correction of 0 0.5. In determining whether you're adding or subtracting 0 0.5, you want to think about the scenario you're evaluating. Let's think about how we would evaluate using the binomial. We would consider our variable based on the binomial. Looking at here, following the example, sample size of 15, probability of 0 0.5. From here, based on the count that is positive, the number of items greater than the median, I determine whether I'm looking at a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. Here we have positives are 5, which is less than 1 half of 15. Therefore, our evaluation using the binomial would be the probability that t is less than or equal to 5. And the continuity correction is going to be plus 0 0.5 because we want to consider all the way up to a number that would round to 5. If we want less than or equal to, we want to include 5. And that's going to include all the way up to 5.5. So when we calculate our z, we're going to have our measurement of 5 plus the correction of 0 0.5. Those are combining to be sort of the combined measurement we're evaluating. Minus our mean over the standard deviation. And in this case, I can replace my variables. The mean is going to be n over 2. That's 15 over 2. And the standard deviation is the square root of n over 4, or the square root of 15 over 4. Now, rather than use the normal distribution table to find what probability this z-score represents, I'm going to show graphically what it is that I'm evaluating. If I sketch a curve and I mark off my critical value, 
whatever that happens to be. I want to then find the probability that the z-score relates to and evaluate based on the position of the probability and the critical value to determine whether to accept or reject the null hypothesis. So when I place my critical value on the left end, and I know that I'm working on the left end because I'm going to have a, a negative z-score. Looking up at the calculation, I know that's going to give me a negative. So I'm evaluating something on the left tail. The critical value marker tells me that anything within what I've just shaded is going to be acceptable. And anything outside is in the critical region and is not acceptable. So let's say that this z results in a probability of t. This t is not in the critical region. It's in the acceptable region. It's not on the other side of the critical value. It's not a probability smaller than what we're marking off at the critical value. So I would accept the null hypothesis. If, on the other hand, I have this z resulting in a probability that ends up over here, that's in the critical region. That probability is too small. I'm not willing to accept that probability. And here I would reject the null hypothesis. And this concludes the lesson, single sample sign test, normal approximation.